हेलो 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 वेलकम एवरी वन टू चेस क्लासिक्स यू मस्ट नो एपिसोड टू बाई सागर एंड दिस इज गोइंग टू बी अ वेरी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग सेशन अ वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू हु इज इन द चैट एंड आई मस्ट से वेरी हैप्पीली दैट आई हैव कैप द लेटेंसी ऑफ दिस वीडियो एज अल्ट्रा लो सो यू नो वेन एवर आई आस्क यू अ क्वेश्चन वेन एवर यू सेंड मी बैक योर रिप्लाई it will be almost in real time that's uh, what is nice about this so welcome to all and can you tell me which player are we going to see a game today let me see if someone can guess it you know i i don't want to reveal it every day uh welcome welcome keith mascarenas welcome ilam parthi welcome so many people whom i know here uh okay vishi kapa blanka carlson magnus tal kasparo oh coders blog has got it right wow how how does uh, how do you know did i did i reveal it somewhere <laughs> yeah very very surprising welcome welcome ipsha welcome mayur so many people <clears throat> good to see you guys okay so the game that we are going to look at today is a very very interesting one I'm going to uh it's between these two individuals here white is petrosian black is pakman okay and uh, they both are you know petrosian you all know is a world champion was a world champion he was world champion from 1963 when he beat mikhail botvinnik to 1969 when he was beaten by Boris Paskey in 1966 he played another world championship match where he beat Paskey so it was like Paskey lost then he came back again through all the qualifications and beat Petrosian eventually to meet Fisher who is Pakman well Pakman was one of the top players during that period he was uh, older than uh, than Petrosian but you know he was <clears throat> when he was young he he was uh, praised by alekhine who was the world champion back then and a lot of uh, things about him i mean proved that he was a very strong player he played many interzonals he played many strong events so let's check out this game we i have my timer here which is 1 hour that we are going to look at and i have my chess board here so everything is in place guys everything is in place and you will have 10 questions to answer today so i hope you are ready uh, to get this going it's going to be great fun and let me begin with the timer okay i think there we go so petrosian with the white pieces often known as one of the most brilliant positional players also prophylactic you know he is very prophylactic in nature likes to play solid defensive chess oh tyro poli thank you so much says present sir thank you for your super chat okay so first move that was played was knight to f3 typical petrosian move like you know i want to develop my knight i don't want to indulge in any main line theory for now okay c5 by pakman and then came the move g3 so also known as the reti system or you can say the barkza system the main aim is to build a house you see this house here for the king and you castle well, this is what petrosian does knight c6 bishop g2 g6 castles bishop g7 and now comes the move d3 okay it's very simple uh chess it's like playing reversed kings indian you know when you play the kings indian with black just so that you guys are aware of it you play uh, your knight to f6 g6 bishop g7 castles and d6 same way here also white indulged in this now black went for the move e6 black was like okay i want to build up a center eventually with d5 i want to develop my knight to e7 so that my bishop remains open very very valid and logical way to play don't you agree played e4 <clears throat> gaining the center 
knight g7 was played and now petrosian played the move rook to e1 petrosian was like okay i want to get the move e5 in Bachman said, okay, I don't mind. You get your e5. I'm going to castle. Petrosian says, thank you so much. I'll now I have control over these two squares. Bachman said, no, no, not really. I'm going to fight back. d6. Nice move by black. Okay, white took. Queen takes. And we reach this position where I want you to just try to think. It's not the first question yet, but try to think what exactly happened. White played the move e4, e5, two moves he gave in and then had to take this pawn which is never a good idea. You know you're pushing your pawn and then you're giving it up. Not great, not great. Okay guys, don't try to guess what this game is about. Let's try to, let's try to think. <clears throat> Isn't he the same person who played for Armenian Eagles? No, Mano, there is a Tigran Petrosian now in Armenia who is a GM, very strong GM, 2650 plus. But he's not the same as Tigran Petrosian, the world champion. You know, world uh, Tigran Petrosian was so famous in Armenia that so many people kept their name after him. Because chess is considered one of the biggest sports in Armenia. They say that uh, Levon Aronian is as famous as Sachin Tendulkar is in India, as, you know, in Ar uh, Armenia. In his wedding, recently in Aronian's wedding, you know, the president of Armenia actually came as the best man. So that's how popular it is. Okay, very good. Yeah, you guys say he has a nice open file on e-file for his rook. True, true. But at the same time, when you lose time like this, it already means black is doing okay. Now what Petrosian did here is he played knight d2. Now he could have played bishop f4 as some of you pointed out but I could move my queen away but also I can play e5 right because I have three defenders here. So right now bishop f4 I don't think make, makes sense. So knight d2 was played and usually in such positions the knight is looking at these two squares on e4 and c4. I want you to now take some time and think what move would you play here as black. You know you are Pac-Man, you are a good player, you are facing Petrosian who is not a world champion until now. Now He is like you know um, about to become the world champion in next two years. So very strong player, already has played many candidates, he played knight d2, what is your move here? Sharan Singh says ready for tomorrow. All the best for the games. Sharon, thank you. Thank you. I'm getting ready. Yeah, slowly and steadily. I'm practicing. I'm trying to get better. Uh, just making sure that I don't lose all my games. So, working on it. F5, Ilam Party, B5, B6. Yeah. Well, in general, I mean, f5 looks a bit weakening because after, let's say, knight c4 and if you get in bishop f4, then these squares become very weak. Yeah, so I don't like this move. In fact, here, the best move would have been b6, no? Just put your bishop on b7 and finish your development. And let's say if he goes, uh, say, knight c4, just maybe even queen d7 or queen d8. And if you try to take advantage of this diagonal, I know, I know it's risky. You know, when you open up this diagonal for this bishop on g2, it is risky. But I play bishop b7, I'm like very happy. You want to take on c6? Okay, fine, I'll take back with my knight. Next move, I'll put my queen here or here or in e7, I'll connect my rooks. Such a beautiful position for black. Yeah, like it's, it's so nice. But the thing is, Pakman here didn't play b6. He, he was like a little bit um, not. I think he was a little bit surprised. He played queen c7 here. And now I want you to think about Petrosian's move here. Because the next move came to me as a big surprise. When I looked at it, when I looked at this game, it was like, why did. First of all, queen c7 is not a great move. But now Petrosian, I mean, it's fine, completely not at all giving black a bad position. 
So your move now, Petrosian, what would you play? Why queen c7? Well, I think he wanted to get away from knight e4 and knight c4 attacks on the queen. So he played it to queen c7. Knight e4, knight g5, a3, Macmohan Verma. Interesting. Macmohan Verma, you're thinking like Petrosian. Very nice. Knight c4 with the idea of bishop f4. Very interesting. To tell you the truth, to tell you the truth, the most natural move that comes to mind in such positions is knight c4. I mean, whenever I see such a position, because the knight belongs on c4, it controls these two squares and the bishop can come out here. But somehow, it doesn't really uh, work so well here in this position. <coughs> because I guess black can just do b6 thinking and uh, then if you play let's say bishop f4 it's possible actually bishop f4 uh, queen to d8 maybe you know my idea is always to just play bishop b7 and finish my development that would make the position so beautiful for black black doesn't need to develop the bishop from here pushing e5 because whenever he pushes e5, his right squares become slightly weak. Yeah. So, therefore, I believe that this could have been a good way to play. But Petrosian surprised everyone and also was very surprising for me when he played the move knight to b3. I was like, why? Knight on b3 is looking very weird. First of all, it does attack this pawn. But you know, black can just defend it. And the most natural move is b6. Why did Pac-Man not play this move b6? Any, any reasons guys? Why do you think Pac-Man didn't go for the move b6? Because remember, when you want to dominate a knight, like here on b3, you push a pawn which is two squares away from the knight. Here, you see this? Two squares and the knight is sort of dominated. It cannot go there. And now suddenly the knight on b3 starts looking very funny, right? Yeah, I agree that if you go bishop f4 here, I cannot play uh, e5. That is for sure. Because now after knight takes e5, you cannot take knight takes e5 because you will lose this um, piece. It's clear, yeah? Because even if you go bishop g4, I think I can just take queen takes and I'm winning as white. So this does not work e5. But what if I just play queen d8 back? Or what if I play the move queen to d7? You know, I want to just play my queen to d7. And yes, black can white can go knight e5. But now remember, in such positions, black has a very powerful exchange sacrifice. Can you think of it? What is the most powerful exchange sacrifice here? Very beautiful move. And I think you will you will like it when you will see it. Yeah, let's let's check d4 also in that position after knight b3. But yes, Harshad, you are right, you are right. Yeah, knight takes e5. Very good, guys. Knight takes e5. Bishop a8 and now black to play. Let's see if you can understand this concept of exchange sacrifices. Petrosian was considered to be a master of exchange sacrifices. What would you play here? Black to play. N7 C6. Yes, also possible, also possible. But even better, yes, all those who said N E5 to C6. Now you look at this position and you realize, oh my God, this bishop is going to be trapped. And next move, I'm just developing my bishop to A6. 
so that I'll attack your bishop. You have to give it up for the knight. Imagine he takes, I take, and now you will say, but hey, this is exchange down. You are full exchange down. But look at this. What am I pointing to? What am I pointing to? Can you tell me in the chat? What does this mean? All these squares that I'm marking over there. What does that mean? Yes, light square weaknesses. Very good, guys. Very good. You guys are very strong. Uh, it means that when your opponent has such weak light squares and if you have the bishop in the position, imagine, okay, I'm just making some random moves. C3, just for the sake of argument. Bishop B7. And you play queen D2. And now suddenly I go queen D5. And you will see that this bishop and queen creates such a dangerous battery on this entire diagonal that it's very difficult for white, very difficult for white to hold it. So you see, whenever opponent has played this, made this house, you know, here, if you go right to the opening and you see this move, already some weaknesses are being created. Now, when you come to this position here where we are sacrificing an exchange, then you will see that if he loses this bishop, often it can be also worth giving a rook because now the dark light squares are extremely weak. Okay, I hope you understand. Yes, ND4 is a big threat now. And that is the reason why you see Parkman had to think a little bit about his bishop here. He didn't think about it. He was like, okay, no problem. Nahi hai. Bishop is not getting developed. I will see what to do. I will see how to develop it and the move he made was knight to d4 not a good move not a good move and guys from this point onwards is where your test begins yes so now i think this is question number two for you what should white play here white to move find a good move for white let's see if you guys now can play like petrosian can play like Petrosian. By the way, all those who thought after b6, d4 is dangerous, it's not. Because after takes, knight takes, yes, there is a pin here. But look, my knight is defending this. Also here, <laughs> now that we have learned takes, takes and knight c6 could be possible, could be. But no, because of the center being open, it might not be so good. But what you can do is just play bishop a6 and next move come rook d8 or rook c8 and this is completely fine. So b6 was really a good move. He went knight d4 and now your move here, what should you play here with white? White to move in this position. c3, okay. c3, many people want to play c3. Some want to take knight takes d4, okay. Some want to play c3. Anything else here? Guys, come on. If you have a tempo, take it. You know, you get a tempo, you take it. Very good. All those who say bishop f4. I like this move. I like this move. When you're getting a move in with a tempo, why not? It's in this position, actually, where Petrosian should have been. Uh, Pac-Man should have really felt like, you know, something is going wrong. By I need to move my queen. I, this is hanging. If I move my queen, if I go d8 knight into c5 might hang all of these thoughts and then he should have played here knight takes f3 bishop takes f3 check yeah it's a check and e5 and i can understand that in this position after say bishop e3 the things are not looking clear i mean it looks very scary how do you defend this pawn so already it's being attacked twice. Your bishop also got closed in a bit. My bishop got really active on this diagonal. So white is very happy. But black can still fight on with the move c4. And black is like, okay, I'll fight. I'll fight this position. And this was the best chance yeah, to play. But what happened in the game? He played the move queen to b6. And now your turn again here. 
He's played his queen to b6, he's kept control on c5, he's kept control on d4, everything looks good, white to play. Yeah, crucial chess, you are right, after nb3, b6 was the right move, that was the best move. Now, next, third question in this position for you, what should white play here? Okay. A4... I don't like this move a4 because a4 means knight takes b3 you somehow ruin your structure a bit c3 is possible c3 is possible but the thing is c3 is not a move that uh, that petrosian wanted to play right now because let's say you go c3 he may take on b3 or he may take on f3. Let's say take, take. This looks like a very playable position. I mean, it's not at all bad to play c3 here. We'll, we'll look at it. It's fine. Also, knight f3, bishop f3 looks fine in this position. But after c3, sorry. c3, knight f3, bishop f3. This also looks good. But what he did in the game was very interesting. And I think a lot of people here found this move. There are two good moves. One is knight e5. Okay. And what is the next? Can anyone find out? If knight e5 is a good move, what is another move that is good here? Let me see if you can find it. Yes, very good. Very good. And FD2. All those who said knight FD2, excellent. The idea is the same, guys. The idea is to reach the C4 square. Okay. This is the idea. I want my knight to reach the C4 square. And that is the point of this entire thing. Okay. So he went knight E5. I think uh, this is a very good time for all of you. To know a bit more about Petrosian. You know Petrosian who's playing with the white pieces is actually uh, everyone knows he's a world champion. He is an excellent exchange sacrifice uh, sacrificer. You know uh, he loves to sac uh, sacrifice exchanges. He's very good at prophylaxis. He's a defensive sort of a uh, very positional player. Everyone knows that. But did you know that Petrosian when he was born within a few years there was world war okay world war two and do you know that he lost both of his parents in the world war and he became an orphan so he was living in the ussr at that point it was not armenia it was ussr and he lost his parents he was i think put into an orphanage or he was you know taken care by some relatives and he used to, when he was youngster, well, like around 15 or 16 years old, he used to sweep the streets to make a living for himself. He was a sweeper. Yeah. He, he was a person who had to sweep the streets to make his living. He used to live in those uh, sort of temporary places. Uh, and he had no money. He was very, very frail and weak. He lost, started losing his hearing at this point. You know, he started to lose his hearing. And sometimes, sometimes when you, uh, guys, is my sound okay? And sometimes, you know, your circumstances was, uh, you know, molds you into a player so when you have faced such horrible situations yeah when you have faced such horrible situations and you still are able to come out of it in life then it shows on the chessboard you become a fighter and and uh, petrosian was a fighter he would never give up that's because in his life he had no choice of giving up yeah actually uh, i i was you know, uh, just uh, from few days, I could, I am not, never able to watch a movie in one go. You know, whenever I watch a movie, it's always in parts. That's because, uh, you know, I have some other things to do all the time. But I was watching this movie Castaway. 
How many of you have seen this movie, Cast Away? Yes, yes, Armenia and Azerbaijan are on war, verge of war right now. That is true. Uh, but that's another topic to discuss later on. How many of you have seen the movie Cast Away? No, 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 no. So many people have not seen it. My God. Guys, I will recommend you today. Okay. Or whenever you get time. Please watch this movie Cast Away. Okay. It's a brilliant movie. It is about a man who is cast away on a lonely island. It's, it's just unbelievable. And when you see that movie, we will discuss it in one of our forthcoming episodes but i really want you uh, to watch it it's 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 similar to what we are talking right now about petrosian's life you know once you face the worst you're not afraid of anything okay so i'm going to uh, come back to chess he took on b3 yeah and now my question to you is would you take a b3 would you take c b3 white to play Ah, Wilson. Nice, nice. Many people have seen it. White to move here. What do you play? A, Ilamparthi. I told you, will you take with the A pawn or the C pawn? And Ilamparthi is saying knight C4. Very good. Very good, guys. A, B3, everyone is saying... Uh, you know, I had this trainer, his name was Joseph Horvath. And whenever there used to be a tactical position, he would tell me, Sagar, what is your plan in this position? So I would sit and I would be like, oh, I want to pick a plan. Would it be h4, h5? And then there would be some tactic like knight takes f7 or something. And I would be like, he would tell me, but this is the move. And I'm like, but sir, you told me that there is, what's your plan? You didn't tell me like there is some tactic. Like in the game, is there anyone who's going to tell you there is a tactic here? So that's how, you know, I uh, became a little bit like that. AB3 is a fine move. If you have to take, then you must take with the A pawn. But otherwise, in the game, Petrosian played this very nice move, knight to c4. Yeah, this was a very nice move. Uh, and full point to you. This was question number four. If you got it, knight to c4 is an excellent intermediate move attacking the queen. Now, black is like, where to move my queen? I don't know. Now, imagine that in this position, you play queen to d8. I just want you to imagine. And I take this pawn. Just look at this position. Look at this position very carefully. Okay. Look at this bishop. Spitting fire on the diagonal. I love this term. Yeah. Spitting fire. Look at this bishop. Another sniper. The long, long diagonal. Look at this knight. Looking at this very, very weak square, the d6 square is such weak. You know, you have to understand weaknesses in a position. That square is never going to be defended by the pawn, any pawn. So it's a weak square there. Bishop can sit there, a knight can land there. And very, very importantly, one more piece is playing in this game. I have marked three pieces, which is another piece, which is very good, which is very good. Can you tell me? One piece that is excellent in this position. B5 is not possible, Akash. Because if you play B5 in this position, the bishop opens up to the rook. Look at the rooks. Yes, very good, guys. You, are, you guys are able to notice this. Look at this rook. Open here. And look at this rook. Doing nothing in his life. This guy, this rook is an entitled rook. You know, he did nothing. But it just opened up. Things opened up for him. He didn't have to even move. And this is a brilliant position for white. Because if you move the bishop, you lose the b7 pawn. If you move the knight somewhere, then bishop d6 attacks the rook and loses this pawn. There are so many things that are going wrong in this position for black. You cannot imagine. And that's the reason why. That's the reason why. Here, Petrosian, uh, Pacman said, I'm going to place my queen on b5. Petrosian said, okay, anyway, I'm going to take this. And here, Pacman played the move A5. 
Pakman was like, okay, if you don't allow me to develop, I may at least try to get my rook from a6, try to control this square, then my bishop can move, then I can maybe push my pawn. I mean, it looks difficult already, but he was thinking about certain things, okay? Now, in this position, white uh, to move again. Fifth question of the day, what would you play here? White to play. Think, 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 think like Petrosian thinks. What would you do? nd6 some people want to put their knight on d6 okay not bad not bad that's this is a soft spot guys you need to feel the soft spot how can i explain the concept of weaknesses i don't need to many times you just have to feel it and you can feel it by looking at such games the knight is jumping into d6 it's a cr crucial square no one is going to say hey look b8 is a weak square udhar jaake kuch ho hi nahi raha that square you need a weakness, a square weakness from which something happens. This d6, bishop sits there, suddenly pins it. Knight sits here, attacks pieces. So it's a very weak square. All those who said knight d6, good move. Bishop d6 was also, also a strong move. This was what was played in the game. Now, rook e8 should have been played here. Okay, this looks like a decent move. Rook e8 in the position. I believe that here uh, Petrosian would have continued with something like queen d2 putting pressure on the a5 pawn <laughs> the mo most unlikely pawn to die but you can't defend it because the rook is hanging here and so there are too many problems to solve parkman was like okay let me play bishop f6 here at least i'll defend it and next move i'll try to attack this bishop here on d6 white to move Petrosian, come on guys you know, people used to say Petrosian could be as aggressive as Mikhail Tal because he was very good at calculations, but he just didn't like to calculate. I mean, he just didn't like to attack. Sorry. He was very good at calculation, but he didn't like to attack. He liked to play positional chess. Very good. Very good. Uh, in this position, all of you are playing very well now. All of you are like, let's get the tempo. Whenever you have your, you know, initiative on your side. What is initiative in chess? You have the ability to create threats. So you played. First of all, look at how the initiative flows. When you play knight e5, he takes, you attack the queen. Initiative. Queen moves. Queen to b5. A b3. Rook opens up. He plays a5, you play bd6, initiative. You are calling the shots. When he defends, you play queen f3, attacking the bishop, initiative. King g7, okay, I defend. I still have black, Parkman is like, I know I'm worse. Of course, Parkman, world-class player, understands he's worse. And now the question is, what is the positional idea that white executed in this position? White to play. What is the positional idea? Now this is point number, how many are done? I think that was queen f3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, this is the seventh one. What's the positional move? Guys, what's wrong with you, all of you? No one's going to fall for my tricks, huh? Very good. Look, there are some people. Who are saying, who are telling me, Queen E3, what a positional move. Very nice positional move. Attacking the C5 pawn. <laughs> Sagar is fooling us. <laughs> yeah, the, the right answer in this position is just, just unbelievable. You know, this is which, this is what shows the beauty of chess. Until now, you're playing on a5, b6, b7, this diagonal, this diagonal. Oh, this is attack, d6 is weak. 
all of these things you're like oh something will happen on the queen side maybe he will lose a pawn all of a sudden petrosian boom boom just boom yeah unbelievable unbelievable now i want you to calculate this variation if i take on f6 with the queen is it over is it over what you have to take back otherwise you're just a piece down calculate now what's happening isn't the king just you just haven't you sacrificed your queen for an entire bishop no, sorry your entire queen for a bishop what are you going to get what is happening here white to play white to play try to think this is actually an amazing combination it also shows how now the dark squared weaknesses are going to haunt black bishop e5 check only move right you have to understand if the king goes back to g7 and i can block it he will be safe so only move check now let's say i go to g5 now what black is threatening is he wants to go to h6 he says to himself if you ever move the bishop i want to run inside that is my hope and here comes a brilliant move again white to move can you find the brilliant move here for white can you find a brilliant move for white guys yes advait very good advait is right all of you guys bishop f4 yes possible but he will come back here you know you will have to find another way to win all those who said all those who said bishop g7 give a pat to yourself on the back it's a brilliant move and you will see that this bishop controls these two squares and now many times we think what will black play now this is the tough part when you are calculating you can always see your move yes bishop g7 but will black play bd7 will black play queen d7 will black play f5 will black play h5 will black play knight f5 knight d5 you get confused you get like i don't understand what will black do in this situation my suggestion to you is give the move to white okay don't make black move at all give the move to white and ask white if it is your move what would you play here and white is like if it is my move so white to move what would you play here as white white to play guys find white how does white finish off this game i know it's black's move but we don't understand what black will play black has so many pieces h4 you think h4 is a mate there are i think two three ways to checkmate in this position h4 very good f4 as well yes yes so let's let's look at h4 check i'm giving the move to white h4 here and now in this position what are the options if king f5 i see a mate in one here can you guys see a mate in one can you guys see a mate in one i can spot it guys not mate in two yeah there are mate in twos as well can you see mate in one yes bishop h3 very good bishop h3 is the move knight e3 does not mate in one because king oh it also mates in one knight e3 oh, sorry 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 i was looking at king e5 but it's controlled by the bishop so yes knight e3 is also mate in one bishop h3 is also mate in one fantastic so h4 maybe he goes king h5 but now again there's a mate in one can you spot it white to play mate in one here in this position white to move mate in one brilliant 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 first the bishop that side this time the bishop comes this side you see how these two bishops and the pawns are just enough to mate this king just two bishops and pawns such a beautiful mate such a beautiful mate and now let's say if he if you go h4 he goes king g4 i don't think there's a mate in one but still 
find the mate in two yeah i'll i'll change the the thumbnail uh, i think it's still episode 1 yes i understand i understand i'll change it check see that mate yeah there are there are mates here yes knight e3 check very good king h5 only move and bishop f3 checkmate well done guys well done another mate is knight e5 check king h5 and bishop f3 mate so once the king is brought out like this as my friend sohan likes to say khechne theme it's called khechne which means pulling pulling in marathi khech uh, pulling is marathi uh, khechne same way you pull the king out you pull him out you then pull him out further and then you trap him this is always the case it's more like um, it's like this mouse trap you you kind of lure the mouse and then you shut him in so this guy king is like the mouse it is lured out with some food and then later on you shut him out with bishop g7 yeah that is the thing here if something like knight d5 it just doesn't matter there is a mate coming up this way these three minor pieces are enough are enough to checkmate the game and now comes the twist of the entire story <laughs> petrosian did not take queen into f6 in the game yes he did he missed it he missed it he played the move rook to e4 is like i am getting one more piece into the attack i am going to get my rook to f4 i am going to attack and black was like my plan i want to attack your bishop white to play you know there is a saying lightning doesn't strike the same place twice white to move what would you play here yes yes the right move here and petrosian found it you know he was alert this time he took king takes check king g5 and he played his bit i want you to tell me the last move the final move now come on guys everyone the full chat all the people here should write this move down what is white's move here white to play and win well he just he just didn't spot queen into f6 what do what to say everyone wow look at the chat look at oh there's one guy who wrote h4 but everyone else okay i want to see how many guys come on why h4 here bish king h6 unnecessarily he will run brilliant brilliant entire chat writes bishop g7 well done guys well done this is like this mouse trap shutting it close and all over right there's just no way to stop the mates h4 followed by bishop h3 or bishop f3 both are mid do anything you want i want to see if anyone can find a defense here for black what do you, what can you do I'm threatening h4 or f4 followed by bishop f3 or bishop h3 mate. There's no way you can stop it. Anyone who has any defense for black? Knight f5 says hema lata, but knight f5 hema lata. What about uh, f4? <clears throat> King has to go say g4, knight e5, checkmate. can't stop that yeah any other defenses anyone else how about playing f6 well f6 is fine but you still i am controlling this f4 same plan 93 this time you know my knight also has two squares no need to go to e5 i can go to e3 also e5 someone suggested okay e5 it's an interesting move what if i go um h4 nonetheless if king here bishop h3 mate 
if king goes to uh, h5 still i would say bishop f3 takes and bishop g4 checkmate queen into c4 yes mayur you are right queen into c4 may well be uh, the only defense here but let's say after h4 i don't see how you are going to stop a mate because now this time king f5 bishop h3 i don't even need to win your queen just mate yeah so guys how did you like this game this is a brilliant game and i'm going to switch now to the chess base 15 mode so that we can analyze this game together we can try to understand we've put in the lines uh so i'm going to switch it here we have the last 15 minutes or remaining uh so now you can see my screen i assume yeah so this is the game ba basically in chess you should learn the art of analysis this is my idea you see a game and you start analyzing it okay let's say knight f3 we write here petrosian plays the super solid reti d3 e6 e4 knight g7 rook e1 castles e5 this entire concept of playing rook to e1 and then pushing e5 doesn't look so convincing because white loses time you know you lose time especially because black can strike back in the center with the move d6 and that's what black does he plays the move d6 very strong move he takes d6 queen takes d6 knight bd2 i would already say that black has a fine position out of the opening okay queen to c7 b6 this was the best move here completing the development right knight c4 here and we also looked at this and i would give it as equal or maybe even slightly better for black you know black looks good f5 i don't like so much knight c4 looks good uh the e6 e7 weakness queen c7 nb3 now the knight really doesn't belong on b3 but petrosian has very concrete idea in mind yeah he wants to attack this and this is where i would say the first mistake of the game happens i would give it a dubious mark or even a question mark question mark would be a bit too harsh dubious is question mark and exclamation mark so it's dubious i don't i don't like it b6 would be a good move i would put it an exclamation mark and i would say we saw this variation with d4 cd knight d4 bishop a6 i like it i like this variation and also we saw here bishop f4 queen d7 knight e5 knight takes e5 i would give it an exclamation mark bishop takes and now knight a6 white is winning an exchange but his bishop on a8 is going to be trapped and this gives black excellent compensation yeah not trapped i would say is going to be bishop on a8 will have to be exchanged for the knight and this gives black excellent compensation so i would say this is very good and there's this si sign for compensation which is infinity and below you have an equal sign it's called compensation okay so i put that in now knight d4 bishop f4 
queen b6 the lesser evil the lesser evil was knight takes f3 bishop takes or queen takes f3 e5 and c4 white is better but black is fighting this was his actually good chance to stay in the game at this point but he did not he played the move queen b6 again a dubious move i am very uh, apprehensive to give a question mark you know maybe some other annotator would give it a question mark but i am like you know galtiya to sabse hoti hai everyone makes mistakes so 95 knight b3 95 is a good move this or nf d2 has the same idea of putting the knight on c4 knight takes b3 knight c4 although capturing on b3 is also very good this intermezzo is better it attacks the queen and asks black where do you want to go so black says queen b5 but i want to look at queen d8 and a b3 i want to say this is a picture perfect position for white look at the bishops spitting down the long diagonal look at the knight on c4 so royally placed eyeing the weak d6 square and the rook the rook on e1 has at least worked hard to get a semi open file the rook on a1 has just been thrown this uh how would you say uh, this opportunity of activity without doing absolutely anything yeah so this is the position queen b5 a b3 a5 bishop d6 the d6 the d6 square is a weakness and white latches on to it rook e8 was possible but plays bishop f6 and now queen f3 an important point to remember is that whenever you have the initiative you should try to keep making aggressive moves to keep up the momentum you should keep on making your opponent answer king g7 and now queen into f6 double exclamation it was not played in the game although petrosian doesn't spot this tactic on this move and plays it on the next it is in fact winning the king is like a mouse which is brought out with a bait by taking on f6 and once it comes out the trap is going to be shut how after king takes bishop e5 king g5 bishop g7 
the brilliant move which shuts the trap you know this is the move and the king is trapped you can check it out for yourself but with ideas like f4 and h4 coming up the mate is near the mate is near or you can say the mate is almost certain here in this position i will spare you with the lines as we have already gone through it rook e4 that was played in the game i would give it a dubious mark because he missed it but it's still winning so petrosian misses a brilliant queen sacrifice here doesn't matter he plays rook d8 queen into f6 this time what do you say yeah lightning doesn't strike the same place twice this time petrosian was alert king takes bishop e5 king g7 bishop g7 after this move pakman realized that his king on g5 is lost and he resigned his king on g5 is sort of trapped and he resigned the game <clears throat> it's very important to find this move bishop g7 as it controls the h6 square and stops the king from escaping yeah next up will be h4 and it will be checkmate and so this is how the game ended we are going to save this analysis here uh, i have my database here i'm going to write sagar shah plus youtube chat yeah here and that's how the analysis and we have i think done it with five minutes to spare i'm very happy uh, i'm going to uh, just show you guys how what i do now after this session is over i'll be uh, making this into an article here so you get this video of yesterday episode one then you get uh, a little bit of a background then I have these test 10 test positions here that I have placed all these positions and then a little bit you know yesterday we saw Botwinic game that had this uh, uh, a postal stamp being created in that and then this entire analysis here which you can just save it and uh, you know you can save it you can also open this in a big way on Chessbase India and play through it. So we have given those features you click back it's back normally you have all these analysis with you and I would I would recommend that whatever I did right now I analyzed it it was on chess base 15 so try getting that because it's really important if you have that make good use of it you also have chess base 15 plus mega database combo and yes I wanted to show you this this is my DVD chess classics by uh, Sagar Shah this is what I made when I was in Hamburg, it's a four hour DVD. It's learn from classics. And if you would like to learn a bit more, then you can get that. Okay. Anyway, I hope that you had a good time today. Analyzing this, we have four minutes still left. Any questions that you have, I would like to answer. We did it in time. Yeah, like I like that movie. Uh, which one is it? Guru in which uh, guru goes uh, like abhishek bachchan he goes and he gives this uh, he starts speaking and in the court and the judge says you have only uh, five minutes to say and he finishes it in like four minutes or something and he says pure ek minute ka munafa you know profit of one minute i give or something like this so i like that yeah
yesterday's pgn was not opening in stockfish aryan i don't know why words on invitational guys i'm i'm practicing i'm practicing for the invitational i don't know how successful i will be but i i'm glad that i'm playing um i'm excited i'm excited to play there i'm excited to learn from my mistakes if i make any i'm excited to just be there you know playing chess uh so chirag says you did not discuss some alternate moves where where arnav says please remove ilam parthi or else we won't be able to answer well ilam parthi if you know something from before then try to give others some time to answer but okay what are the timings of these live sessions well i'm planning to continue at 9:30 every day that's the plan also as i said grandmaster chess is something that i'm planning to launch but i want to finish with the invitational first so two days i think after 1st of october i'll launch that new series uh with the comedians uh will this analysis help to improve our chess rating drastically i think this approach where you say ask me how will i in rating increase is a wrong uh, approach itself you need to ask me what will help me to improve at chess what will help me to get better at chess if you have the rating in mind it doesn't work that way it doesn't work with anything in life like even in personal relations you cannot really be expecting how will i you know how will that person help me how what should i do with my wife or with my parents that they will help me it's more like you give you do things because that's what you like if you love chess you practice you do these things if you think looking at games of petrosian is going to help you which i believe will then yes you will improve if you don't think so well try to find a way whatever it is yeah sanjay thank you i you sent a mail we replied very soon uh, how many participants for invitational i think around 60 odd ims but maybe it will increase always on the last day you get more entries so we'll have more entries uh there yes ilam parthi has a wild card entry there so who knows maybe he will win amongst all ims ilam parthi uh any any other questions i guess yeah we'll we'll look at many other games that that will be going on but today you know when i go to sleep or something there are certain games which play in my mind and this one was something that i wanted to show i was very surprised with this move bishop g7 it made such a deep impression on me i wanted to share it with you so guys please like this stream please make sure that you study them study these uh, games carefully learn how to analyze get chess base work on it seriously it's something that is very important for your growth i have last 5 seconds to say and i thank you all very much love you all and i'll see you tomorrow bye bye